Luke 17 37 to 18 43, through the Bible. Chapter 18. Theme, Parable of the Unjust Judge, Parable of the Pharisee and the Publican, Jesus Blesses the Little Children, Jesus Confronts the Rich Young Ruler with Five of the Ten Commandments, Jesus Heals the Blind Man on Entering Jericho. Before we begin this chapter, I want to say a word about our Lord personally. I believe that He was God manifest in the flesh. I also believe that He was not any less God because He was man. On the other hand, I believe He was not any more man because He was God. He was a perfect man, a real man. Frankly, if you had been there in that day, you would have enjoyed His company. It would have been a real privilege to be in His company and to hear His laughter. I don't like any picture I see of Him, the artists never picture Him laughing, and I think He laughed many times. Our Lord was so human. In His presence you would have the best time you ever had. You know folk, I am sure, whom you love to be with. I know several preachers whose company I especially enjoy. They sharpen my wits and my mental powers, yet they tell the funniest jokes I've ever heard. I think our Lord was good at that. We are coming to an incident that I am confident made many people smile. And He spake a parable unto them to this end, that men are always to pray, and not to faint, Luke 18 1. He concluded chapter 17 with a discourse on the last days and the fact that He would be coming again. And He likened the last days to the days of Noah, that they would be difficult days, days that would not be conducive to faith. So now He talks to them about a life of faith in days that are devoid of faith. That is the reason it is so pertinent for this hour. We are living in days, as He indicated, when men's hearts are failing them for fear. What we have in this first parable is a pertinent paragraph on prayer for the present hour. Notice that he says he spoke a parable to them to this end, that is, for this purpose, that men should always pray, and not to faint. He opens two alternatives to any man who is living in difficult days. You and I will have to do one of the two. You will have to make up your mind what you are going to do. Men in difficult days will either faint or they will pray. Either there will be days of fear or days of faith. During World War II, when the bombing was so intense on the city of London, a sign appeared in front of one of the churches in London that said, if your knees knock together, kneel on them. That is practically a restatement of what our Lord has said, man ought always to pray, and not to faint. It is the same thought that Paul put a little differently, pray without ceasing, 1 Thessalonians 5:17. This does not mean you are to go to an all-day or all-night prayer meeting. Prayer is an attitude of the life. It is more an attitude of life than an action of the lips. Remember that Paul said to the Romans, The Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered, Romans 8:26. That is, they cannot be put into our words. And many times we do not have the words to pray, but we are praying nonetheless. And it is the entire life that is behind the words which are spoken, that makes prayer effective. There was a famous preacher, years ago in the state of Georgia, who had many very unusual expressions. One of them was this, when a man prays for a corn crop, God expects him to say Amen with a hoe. You can't just stay on your knees all the time and pray for a corn crop. That's pious nonsense. But to pray for the corn crop, and then go to work, is the thing our Lord is talking about in days when men's hearts are failing them. Men ought always to pray, and not to faint. Parable of the Unjust Judge When he told this story about the unjust judge and the widow, it probably was well known to the hearers of that day. They knew exactly what he was talking about. The story goes like this. Saying, There was in a city a judge, which feared not God, neither regarded man, and there was a widow in that city, and she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of mine adversary, Luke 18 2-3. Now in this city there was a judge who was a godless fellow. He was an unscrupulous politician, scheming, cold, and calculating. Everything he did was for himself, as we shall see. Everything he did had to minister to his own advancement and satisfy his own ambition. He did not fear God. God had no place in this man's thinking. And since he did not fear God, he had no regard for man. He had no respect for this widow at all. The widow likely was being beaten out of her little home. The mortgage was being foreclosed, and she was being treated unjustly. She went to this prominent judge, took her place in his office, and asked the secretary if she might talk to the judge. The secretary told her, he's very busy. If you will just tell me the nature of your complaint. So the widow told her, I'm just a poor widow. I live out here at the edge of town, and I'm about to lose my place. 
It is unfair and unjust, and I want to appeal to the judge. The secretary went into the judge's office and said, there is a widow out there. Well, I can get rid of her in three minutes. I'm a politician, I know how to handle her. Let her come in. She came in. He listened to her for three minutes. Then he said, I'm sorry, but that's out of my realm. I'd love to do something for you, but I am unable to do anything. Good day. The next day when he came into the office, there was the widow. He hurried into his office, called his secretary in, and asked, what's that widow doing back? She says she wants to see you. You go back and tell her I am busy until lunch time. I've already told her that. But she brought her lunch. She says she will stay here as long as necessary. She stayed all that day and didn't get to see him. He thought he had gotten rid of her. But the next morning when he came in, there she was. She did that for several days, and finally he said, I'll have to do something about this. I can't go on like this. Notice that our Lord tells us what he said, within himself. And he would not for a while, but afterward he said within himself, though I fear not God, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubled me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me, Luke 18 4-5. The word weary is a very poor translation. I only wish it were translated literally. What he said was this, I must see her lest she give me a black eye. You see, he was thinking of himself. I don't know if he meant a literal black eye, we are not told that the widow had threatened him. But the very fact that a widow is sitting in the judge's office every day doesn't look good. He had gotten into office by saying, I'm thinking of the poor people, but he wasn't, he was thinking of himself. And lest she give me a black eye, I'd better hear her. To his secretary he said, bring her in. This time he said to the widow, I'll give you legal protection. That's the parable. And the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge saith. And shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them? Luke 18 6-7. Now, I have heard many Bible teachers say that this parable teaches the value of importunate prayer. Although I don't like to disagree with men who are greater than I, that isn't so. This is not a parable on the persistency or the pertinacity of prayer, as though somehow God will hear if you hold on long enough. This is a parable by contrast, not by comparison. Parables were stories given by our Lord to illustrate truths. The word parable comes from two Greek words. Para means beside, and balo is the verb, meaning to throw, we get our word ball from it. A parable means something that is thrown beside something else, to tell you something about it. For instance, a yardstick placed beside a table is a parable to the table, it tells you how high it is. A parable is a story our Lord told to illustrate divine truth. There are two ways He did this. One is by comparison, but the other is by contrast. Our Lord is saying, when you come to God in prayer, do you think that God is an unjust judge? When you come to Him in prayer, do you think He is a cheap politician? Do you think God is doing things just for political reasons? My friend, if you think this, you are wrong. God is not an unjust judge. If this unjust judge would hear a poor widow because she kept coming continually, then why do you get discouraged going to God who is not an unjust judge, but who actually wants to hear and answer prayer? Why are God's people today so discouraged in their prayer life? Don't you know, my friend, he is not an unjust judge? You don't have to hang on to his coattail, and beg him, and plead with him. God wants to act in your behalf. If we had that attitude, it would change our prayer life, to come into his presence knowing he wants to hear. We act as if he is an unjust judge, and we have to hold on to him, or he will not hear us at all. God is not an unjust judge.